uh, usually. Uh, so I'm Matt. Uh, I'm a software engineer in the DSDE. Uh, I originally come from the Picard team. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you about mapping, processing, and duplicate marking with the Picard tools. So this is the sort of initial pre-analysis step that's going to take us all the way from raw base calls to GATK ready reads. Uh, so we, here we are at the very beginning of the best practices pipeline. Uh, so uh, uh, although it looks small on the, uh, on the diagram, there's actually a lot of hidden complexity in this first step. Uh, so uh, the sort of main uh, things we're going to do are mapping the reads to a reference and then marking PCR duplicates. But there's also many intermediate steps that we also have to take care of. Uh, and most of these steps are going to be done with the Picard uh, toolkit. So what is Picard? Uh, and what's the difference between Picard and GATK? So Picard is another set of Java-based tools that you access via the command line, much like the GATK. Uh, sort of for historical reasons, it was developed sort of independently at first, but uh, uh, right now we're in the process of sorting, sort of merging that into GATK and sort of unifying the functionality. Uh, so the tools in the Picard uh, package are sort of more focused on pre-processing of, of data. Uh, so getting from raw base calls to, to reads, manipulating FASTQ and SAM files, uh, filtering, sorting, things like that so that you can get it ready for variant calling. Uh, so in this step, uh, the main things we're going to do are sort of convert the raw base calls coming off of the sequencers to SAM reads, map them to a reference with BWA, which is an external <laughs> alignment program, uh, mark PCR duplicates, uh, which is necessary for variant calling, uh, perform various sorts of general processing on the SAM files, sort of cleaning, validating, sorting, uh, and merging uh, data for multiple sequencing runs if necessary, uh, and also collecting QC metrics to help the lab sort of see how we're doing. And aside from BWA, which is an external program, all of this is going to be done with uh, Picard. Uh, so we're going to start with base calling, uh, focusing on Illumina sequencing. Uh, so ironically, we don't deal very much with FASTQ files in the best practices pipeline. Our best practice recommendation is to actually convert the raw base calls directly to an unmapped SAM. So that's a SAM file without the alignment information. Uh, there are various advantages to this over using FASTQ files, for example, SAM files can store file level metadata like all the read groups and libraries that are in this sequencing run. Uh, but if you do happen to have FASTQ files, there are also Picard tools for dealing with that. Uh, but the best practice pipeline first checks the raw base calls to see if they're correctly formatted. Various things could go wrong during the sequencing run. It could be truncated after you know, some number of cycles. Uh, the files could be incorrectly formatted somehow. So we first need to validate that that's correct uh, so we don't proceed with sort of malformed data. Uh, once we've done that, uh, we use a Picard tool called Illumina base calls to SAM uh, to convert the base calls to an unmapped SAM file. Uh, and we also collect low level QC metrics about the base calling. Uh, so here you can sort of see starting from the sequencer, we go to the base calling files, which are essentially images. And from there, we go to an unmapped SAM so there's one row per read in the SAM file. Uh, and we have sort of some grayed out fields right now because we don't have the alignment information yet. Uh, so mapping is the next step. It's very crucial since if the reads are not lined up properly to the reference, we won't be able to variant call correctly. Um, so ideally, uh, we would just have the sample in a single piece and map it directly to the reference genome. Then we could sort of see at a glance you know, what are the variants, both local like SNPs and indels and uh, larger scale variants like structural variants. Uh, but of course, we don't have the sample in one piece, so we need to sort of process each read uh, independently. Uh, so the way we do this uh, is uh, sort of a very complicated algorithm. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to go too much into the uh, algorithmic details, but essentially we're going to try to see what's the region on the reference. Uh, sorry. Yep. Oh, no. yep, so uh, uh, we're going to see uh, for each read, what is the region of the reference that it sort of matches most closely. Of course, uh, this is complicated by the fact that the sample genome is different from the reference genome. That's why we're here after all. We're trying to see what the variants are. Uh, 
So the sort of alignment algorithm needs to account for that. So here are a couple of sort of high level examples. Uh, in the top example, say we have three regions of the reference that all sort of look very distinct. Uh, and uh, if we have reads uh, taken from this genome, then uh, for any given read, it's easy to see where it maps because the regions are all very distinct. Uh, in the bottom example, say we have a region of the genome that has been duplicated. Uh, so a read that comes from, say, region 2A or 2B will map sort of similarly to both regions. So we have to decide where to place it, and we're not as sure uh, in our final decision. Uh, so uh, when we've sort of uh, done the alignment, uh, then for each read, we will get a SAM record, uh, which is a line in the SAM file that has the sequence information as well as uh, the alignment information. Uh, there are a lot of fields, uh, but the ones we're sort of most interested in are the pause, which is the sort of start position on the forward strand of the reference that this uh, read map maps to. Uh, the mapping quality, which is a sort of measure of our confidence, it's uh, FRED scaled, as we've sort of previously discussed. Uh, so uh, basically, the higher the FRED score uh, here, the more likely it is that this mapping is correct. Uh, the cigar string we've also uh, previously talked about, it sort of describes the structure of the alignment. Uh, what, what are the portions of the alignment where the uh, read sequence sort of matches up base to base with the reference sequence? Uh, for, the, for the cigar string, we don't sort of care about SNPs. If it's a mismatch base, we still count it as a match as long as it sort of lines up structurally. Uh, but we do sort of include information on deletions and insertions. So in this example, uh, sort of we have a read that sort of aligns starting at position two on the reference. So that's why pause equals two. Uh, the ba bases sort of line up up until position five where there's a deletion. Uh, and so we include that information on the cigar string. And then similarly, between seven and eight, there's an insertion. So that's also included. Um, and of course, we also have the, uh, the actual read uh, sequence. So that's sort of a description of conceptually what we are doing in the alignment process. Uh, in practice, what we do is we use the BWA MEM algorithm. So this is a program uh, not developed at Broad, but it's the industry standard. Uh, uh, so it takes in a reference genome and some sort of collection of reads, either a FASTQ file or you can pass it in unmapped SAM and then pipe that to another Picard program that will convert that to sort of FASTQ format for the BWA MEM program to to, uh, to understand. Uh, and that outputs another SAM file, which has the mapping information. Uh, the raw BWA output is sort of a little rough around the edges. It may not be up to our quality standards. So we need to run another Picard program to sort of validate it uh, and take care of uh, sort of uh, things that we don't want in our final analysis ready SAM file, sort of things like alignments clipping off the end of a reference sequence. Uh, mate pairs where one end of the mate is just omitted from the SAM file, things like that. Uh, so that's done with another Picard program called Merge BAM Alignment. And while we're at it, we're also going to sort the reads by genomic coordinate, which we now know because we have mapped them to the reference, uh, add read group info and other metadata as well. Uh, so this is all for DNA-seq. For RNA-seq, we actually use a different alignment program, STAR, uh, and there's also an additional post-mapping step. Uh, but the steps that I'm about to describe for post-processing of the alignment uh, are unchanged. Uh, and that will be gone into in more detail in the RNA-seq presentation, which is coming next. Uh, so on to marking duplicates. So what do we mean by duplicates? Uh, we're referring specifically to PCR duplicates from the amplification step. Sorry, yes. Sorry, I just have a couple questions. Um, so for the DCL to the unmapped SAM, yes. uh, Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you've been given, if you've gotten your data sequence and you have FASTQ files of the raw reads, then there are a couple other Picard programs you can use to uh, sort of uh, sort that and uh, annotate it. Uh, so you can just pass that directly to BWA. That will give you the raw output file in SAM format already, and then you can use a Picard program to sort it. And there's another Picard program to add read group information. Uh, so it's just sort of a slightly different process. Uh, and that's all documented on the Picard website. Can you get the read group information from the read names? Uh, sometimes. Uh, the read names may not, depending on, uh, uh, on how the file was produced, it may or may not include that information. Uh, if not, then you would need to get it from some other source. And so you guys use PWA 
Yeah, so uh, uh, we occasionally use, uh, in certain pipelines, we use BWA align ALN, uh, but that's only because of uh, sort of uh, we haven't had the time to convert it yet. Our best practice is, you know, uh, for any D DNA seq data, uh, ideally use BWA mem. Uh, sorry? Yeah, we've done sort of a lot of uh, comparison. Uh, there are sort of a couple uh, papers that we can point you to that sort of compare uh, how they sort of uh, stack up to each other. Uh, but our sort of analysis indicates that BWA mem is the best. Uh, yeah, so uh, so with uh, marking duplicates, uh, you could parallelize it uh, if you sort of knew what the sort of or coordinate uh, order of the reads is, which you do get from once you've sorted the SAM file. However, yeah, yeah, there is definitely a lot of uh, um, uh, we do do some amount of scatter gather in that sense. Uh, it's actually a little tricky because. Uh, the sort of way in which we mark duplicates uh, has, is a little different than just sort of looking at the mapped coordinates. Uh, but aside from that, we do do uh, some scatter gather. Uh, yes? Yeah, so I had a question. Uh, in the BCL to fast queue conversion, sorry, BCL to SAM conversion, does it all automatically take care of the different lanes and different samples? Do you need to? Uh, so it'll sort of create a unmapped SAM for each lane, and then later on you have to. Uh, aggregate that separately. But yeah, it's sort of a lane level uh, operation. All right, so, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, just something quick. Uh, yeah. uh, we have our own sort of QC uh, tools uh, in the Picard toolkit uh, that sort of can uh, extract QC metrics from the unmapped SAM file. Uh, there are also a couple, uh, couple pipelines that do sort of produce the fast queue just because it's needed for a couple of steps. Uh, so we, in that case, we sort of use a mix of the unmapped SAM and the fast queue. All right, so uh, I'm going to move on to marking duplicates. Uh, so as I uh, mentioned, uh, we're specifically interested in PCR duplicates uh, from the library amplification step. Uh, why do we want to mark them? Uh, well, essentially, the reason is that they're non-independent measurements of a sort of template sequence. So you sort of, you know, prepared your library, you have this fragment of uh, input DNA, and now you're going to create many copies of it. Uh, why do you not want to include all those copies in variant calling? It seems like you'd want to do that since it's more coverage. However, in the case of PCR duplicates, coverage can actually be worse than not having the coverage uh, for a couple different reasons. One, this variant calling sort of assumes that each read that it sees is sort of independent evidence. Uh, and in the case of duplicates, uh, sort of duplicates of each other are not independent evidence of a variant because they should either both have the variant, uh, or if they don't, then it's because of some artifact, because they came from the same input DNA. So if there's a difference, it must be a sequencing error uh, or a PCR error or something like that. Uh, and what's more, if there's an, sort of an artifact that gets introduced in the sample or library prep in the template sequence, then that will get propagated to all of the duplicates. So now you're sort of amplifying the errors in the input. Uh, so uh, in order to mitigate the effects of this, uh, we mark duplicates. And for variant calling, we just choose the best uh, read from each duplicate set uh, to count for variant calling. Uh, so how do we identify duplicates? Uh, so our general sort of uh, approach is we ask the question, what was the first base that was sequenced uh, for this read? Uh, and in what direction did the sequencing sort of uh, proceed? Uh, so for paired end reads, what this means is we want to take both ends of the pair and sort of see what is the sort of first base uh, that was sequenced. Uh, so basically, if when we overlay, overlay this uh, paired end read onto the reference, we want to see sort of what the two endpoints are. Uh, so that will be sort of the five prime end of each uh, since the one end is going to be from the reverse uh, strand, it's going to be for one end, you know, the five prime end on the, that strand, and for the other, the five prime end on the other strand. Uh, and we do this by looking at the alignments and sort of seeing uh, sort of uh, 
what those coordinates are. Uh, and then we, once we've sort of identified duplicates in this way, uh, we choose a representative read from each duplicate set based on sort of uh, sum of base quality scores and then other criteria to break ties. Uh, now, of course, it's a little more complicated than that because the aligned map of the read may not include all the bases in the sequence. Some bases may have been clipped from the end for various reasons. Uh, and for marking duplicates, we actually want to include those because what we say is, oh, well, we trust BWA's judgment on where this read goes on the reference, but we don't trust its judgment on, you know, what was the, you know, first base that was sequenced because it's sort of, you know, it tries to do us a favor by sort of ignoring bases that are bad, but for our purpose, we want to include those bases if those bases were actually in the sequence. Uh, and another catch is that uh, uh, fragments that are mapped to the reverse strand are actually reported in the SAM file as their reverse complement, uh, just to, for ease of sort of lining all the sequences up on the forward strand of the reference. Uh, you sort of, it sort of, you know, reverse complements it for you so you can see where it uh, lines up. Uh, but so you sort of need to do some sort of flipping arithmetic in your head to see what were the sort of first, the two end bases that were the first ones that were sequenced from this template. Um, and this can be deduced from SAM flags and the cigar string of the alignment. Uh, so here's a sort of example that may help clarify things. Uh, suppose you have these seven reads aligned to the reference, uh, and uh, uh, some of them are aligned to the forward strand, the others are aligned to the reverse strand, uh, the orange ones. Uh, and for those ones, uh, what you're, the sequence you're seeing, uh, that is the reverse complement of the actual uh, sequence as it was uh, deduced from base calling because that's just the way that it gets reported by the aligner. Uh, and so now we're just looking at the pile up of all those reads onto the forward strand of the reference. Um, and suppose that uh, our aligner has also clipped some of the bases. Uh, there are S's and H's because there are actually different kinds of clipping, hard and soft clipping, but we're not going to go into the details of that. Basically, the question we want to ask is, from these seven reads, what are sort of the duplicate sets? Uh, so first we have to uh, take each read and sort of see what the first uh, base sequence is, and we can do that by taking the alignment start plus the orientation of the read plus the clipping to sort of extrapolate uh, what position that is. Uh, and notice also that one of the reads has uh, an insertion and a, and a deletion. Uh, for marking duplicates, as surprising as it may sound, we actually don't care at all about the indels uh, or the substitutions in the sequence. Our assumption is that uh, there may be all sorts of artifacts and sequencing errors that can be introduced between the uh, you know, actual PCR amplification of the input libraries and the uh, reported output from BWA. Uh, so in fact, uh, when you sort of uh, see what actually is a good predictor of what is a duplicate, uh, those things don't actually seem to matter. Uh, in fact, they're worse than not, you know, th they're worse than not uh, using that information because you will get a lot of false negatives, uh, since a lot of PCR duplicates will actually have different sequences from each other. Uh, so I'm sort of working through the example. Uh, one set of reads that are duplicates of each other, according to this algorithm, are reads 1, 3, 5, and 6. Uh, so they're all duplicates because they all have the same sort of 5 prime start coordinate. Uh, read 6 has some clipping, but once you extrapolate based on the clipping, we deduce that it started at the same position as the others at uh, position 1. So reads 2 and 4 are another duplicate set. Uh, again, these are on the reverse strand, and they both when you consider the fact that they're on the reverse strand, the start is actually the last base, uh, position 7. And uh, read 7 is all by itself. Uh, so that's sort of a quick example. Uh, hopefully that adds some clarity. Uh, but it, du mark duplicates is a very uh, sort of subtle algorithm. Uh, so a lot of people get sort of confused as to what it's actually doing. Uh, there's more documentation on it on the Picard website. Uh, yes? Can bow tie also include this kind of clipping? Bow tie? Bow tie? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, I think Ami would have to answer that if he's here. What was the question? Uh, so the question was, uh, does bow tie do, I think uh, you were asking, does bow tie <coughs> do this sort of clipping? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
does a bow tie clip the ends of alignments? All right, so, uh, oh, yes? Can you uh, comment uh, or compare a little bit between the in-car remote lubricant and like the sand tool remote lubricant? Uh, and also the definition of lubricant, whether the same color may apply to another lubricant. Yeah, so uh, I think uh, just in the interest of time, I'll just focus on the first half. Uh, so SAM tools versus Picard. Uh, so yeah, SAM tools uh, is another uh, command line uh, set of tools. Uh, it has a uh, tool called uh, RM dupe, which also can remove uh, PCR duplicates. Uh, Picard has sort of more ability to deal with weird edge cases. So for example, if there are uh, mate pairs that map to different chromosomes, uh, Picard will actually sort of treat that, it will still take that into consideration. Uh, because Picard assumes that weird edge cases like that might actually still be real. There might be some weird translocation event, something like that. Uh, whereas I think SAM tools RM dupe will not take those uh, edge cases into account. So uh, just moving on a bit to uh, more sort of more general SAM processing that we have to do before we can be variant calling ready. There are a lot of other useful Picard tools uh, that are in the pipeline. Uh, so if you think of sort of the workflow as starting sort of in the wet lab with sort of library prep, uh, you know, you prepare a bunch of libraries from a sample and you may want to sort of sequence them across multiple flow cells, multiple sequencing runs, uh, because you want sort of some fault tolerance and you also want some sort of, you know, uh, distributed ability to sort of uh, sequence more. Uh, and so you're going to sort of do this scatter gather operation where you need to, you might have multiple libraries for multiple samples on a single flow cell and multiple flow cells for a single sample. Uh, so you sort of are multiplexing things and then you need to sort of do this bookkeeping where you say, okay, I have all of these uh, SAM files now. Now I need to sort of figure out, you know, extract this library from these flow cells and this library from these flow cells and those libraries both belong to this sample. So I'm going to merge those into its own BAM file or SAM file and then I'm going to do the same for this other sample. Uh, so there's a lot of sort of uh, bookkeeping going on there. Uh, and sort of at the flow cell level, uh, where we have uh, one SAM file per flow cell lane, uh, we're going to be doing the base calling to SAM conversion. We're going to be doing the mapping uh, and sort of the SAM cleaning and validation. Uh, we're also going to mark duplicates twice, once at the flow cell level and once at the sample level. Uh, the reason we do this is because we want to do some QC at the flow cell level that requires us to know sort of, you know, what the duplication rate is. Uh, but then once we merge uh, a bunch of uh, flow cells into one SAM file for a sample, then we need to mark duplicates again because the duplicates could have been, you know, spread across those multiple, uh, those multiple flow cells. Uh, so the QC metrics that we collect, uh, we collect all sorts of different metrics and there are lots of uh, Picard programs to, to do this. Uh, we look at things like base quality score distributions, insert size distributions, mapping quality distributions, coverage, GC bias, uh, filter pass rates, things like that. Uh, these are all very essential tools for the lab uh, to, uh, to, to look at. Um, and there are also many other Picard tools that I haven't mentioned. Uh, uh, as I mentioned briefly, if you're working with fast queue data instead of uh, unmapped SAMs from the base calls, uh, uh, there are separate programs to deal with that. Uh, you can convert between fast queue and unmapped SAM. Uh, you can sort SAMs manually by either read name or genomic coordinate, things like that. Uh, you can add metadata with programs like add or replace read groups. Uh, also, you can sort of validate uh, whether the SAM file conforms to the proper format. Uh, and you can also use a program called revert SAM to get rid of certain undesirable things in the SAM file. Uh, is, that a, is that a question? No, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, so there are lots of useful tools in Picard for dealing with SAMs and also VCFs and fast queues. Uh, and uh, the other good news is that uh, we're sort of merging the 
uh, user support for Picard and JDK. So if you post a question on the JDK forum uh, about Picard, you will get useful answers from that. Uh, and how do you use Picard? It's very similar to using JDK. Uh, just like you saw before, it's a command line Java-based interface. Uh, the argument passing is a little different, but uh, in principle, it's the same thing. Uh, it's also fully open source. Anyone can con contribute. Uh, we're on GitHub, uh, and we also have a, a website. Uh, so to conclude, uh, here we are at the beginning of the best practices workflow. Uh, all those that sort of uh, What's described there is uh, mapping and marking duplicates. If you've seen, there's also all sorts of other uh, SAM processing that needs to go on, and Picard has tools for that. All right. Uh, after this, I think, is the break, but if there are any questions, I can answer them. Yep. Uh, so, uh, I think, uh, there's not really a good tool for, like, so GATK has this Q tool, uh, but you can't, uh, use Picard programs with that, I think. Is that correct? Um, no, that's right. Uh, the, uh, Q is really integrated with, uh, GATK, although you can actually use Q to scatter gather Picard jobs. But we're sort of moving more towards integration, so there should be updates on that soon. <laughs>